Yes, you are. Whoa, hey, what's no. up? You think she flew down? I deny it. Nothing in my way. I decided no. no. On choice. Good morning, good morning, peace and greetings to everybody. Happy Black August. Let me let me say that out out the gate. Happy Black August <laughs> to my family, my Black folks. Happy Black August to you guys. If you don't know what Black August is, please Google, look it up. Talk to some friends, some family, some folks. Um, I don't have the time to explain it right now, but call me after the show and I'll explain it to you. Uh, today, I have a special guest who I am elated to be able to finally interview. And if you have not heard of this sister, I don't know what community you have been serving for the past 16 years. I have the founder and executive director of Stand Up, Speak Out, NC, Monica Day. How are you, sister? Good morning. I am good. How are you? I'm smooth as ice and twice as nice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I, I want to thank you because I know, I know first and foremost, you were mother. Yes. And I got the babies today on this Saturday morning. And I done called you and got you out the bed early. <laughs> no, I get up early because they get up early. <laughs> babies, right, right, right. So <laughs> I, I thanks for giving me at least this time to talk to you. And ask Absolutely. Not just for our listening audience, but I, I, I honestly want to know your opinion for my personal knowledge because I respect your 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 knowledge in these areas that I'm going to ask you so much. I really I really want to know. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that time, sister. Absolutely. Um, so most definitely, you got stand up, speak out. All right. Please inform those who have been under a rock what stand up, speak out, North Carolina is. So Stand Up Speak Out of North Carolina, also known as SUSO NC, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that works with primarily children who have witnessed domestic violence or sexual abuse. But we also work with the families because we believe we can't just work with children without also working with the parents. Um, so we focus on working with children and families who have witnessed domestic violence or experienced it. And what's unique about our organization is that we use art therapy as a component to help them process what they've experienced, but ultimately begin to walk through their healing journey. Um, we focus on working with children because we're trying to break that generational cycle of what seems to be normal in a lot of households, you know, yelling, verbal abuse, uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse that may look like this is normal behavior, right? This is okay. And so what we look at is if we can inform the children that this is not okay through education, prevention, and awareness, then we hope that we are beginning to break that cycle where children don't become adults who are now com continuing that cycle. Excellent, excellent. Why? Did you choose that work? What what brought you to? Because I was the, the children. That is that's beautiful. Like what brought you to that work? Uh, I'm a survivor. Um, I'm a survivor of both sexual abuse and domestic violence. That all happened before I was 15 years old. Um, I have a, you know, when I share that, people are like, "Whoa, well, she must have had a really hard life." And I like to share kind of my background and where I come from. Um, I come from a two-parent home. Uh, my parents are both very, you know, Christian religious, so I grew up in church, uh, going to church all the time, um, both pretty much, um, you know, middle class, I would say. Um, parents have been together 36 some years. Uh, I was your normal child, uh, went to church, went to school, all of the above. Uh, but it's, it was in that space that I was assaulted in the church um, setting where I was assaulted when I was 11 years old. So this outgoing, 
a uh, girl who loved watching Scooby-Doo, riding my bike, playing with Cabbage Patch Kids for those 1980 folks. Uh, I right. was a normal girl that, you know, just healthy lifestyle. Um, and when I was sexually assaulted at a church convention in 1992, my entire life shifted. And that, you know, outgoing girl who was bubbly became rebellious and getting into a lot of trouble um, and one risk factor after the next. So from being assaulted to being mute, isolated, parents trying to get me the help that I needed uh, through counseling and anything, any resource that they could pull from, nothing worked. And I began to just become... Um, the opposite of what I was, uh, skipping school, getting in trouble, cursing teachers out, uh, fighting, anger, all of that that comes after you have been, for many, after you've been assaulted. And yeah. I want you to explain that for me, why that symptom. Why is that, because I have, I have witnessed that a lot. Mm -hmm. Why is that after the sexual assault, you, you, this one of the major symptoms is rebel, rebelling and a lot of other avenues, schoolwork against parents, things like that. Could you, could you speak to that for a second? There are a lot of different risk factors for each individual. It looks different, but you know, um, for a lot of folks, you have, you one, you've been violated. You, as a child, don't understand either what just happened, why it happened. Um, and you have all these different feelings from feeling guilty to feeling like it was your fault, to feeling shame, to feeling anger. And it's, it's like a child who can't articulate, what is this that I feel right now? And so uh, some kids become isolated and mute uh, and don't want to talk. Others become uh, children who are, as I mentioned, like myself, rebellious. I'm trying to get this out. I don't know how to tell you that I'm hurting. I don't know how to tell you that I'm in pain. I don't know how to tell you that mentally I'm feeling a lot of different things, anxiety, depression, and all of the different things that come along with that. But the only way that I know how to express it is either some folks, it's it. you may find a child who's very emotional, that's crying a lot, uh, unexplained crying. Sometimes you see those kids who are just, you know, someone hurt me. I'm going to hurt them. And that pretty much what I became was I was hurting. So I wanted to hurt other people, whether that showed up through anger, whether it showed up through fighting or whatever it was, I was feeling this, these different feelings that I could not articulate. And that happens a lot with, with young people. Um, that is also the reason why we don't just focus at Stand Up Speak Out on just talk therapy, but using art. Because as a child, you don't always know what it is or can't always say, this is what I feel. You haven't been able to put that into words, but through art, through poetry, through different uh, forms of creative expression, you may begin to get that child to open up about what they've experienced. And that, and that you, you burn it, you talk, you burn it through my questions. That's a, <laughs> that was my, that's, that was, that's an excellent segue though, sis. Um, why, why is the art, tie, tie that for us for those who can't see, you know, even though you just said it, go ahead and speak a little more on that. Why is the art important and how is it utilized through poetry, through, through like physical artwork paintings and things? How is that important to, to the healing process? And, and tell me, because I know you have coined the phrase healing through art. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that, please. So again, I'll, 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 I'll give, I like to give real scenarios, real stories. And so I'll speak for myself. I'm a spoken word poet. Uh, I have used spoken word as an outlet. So when I was sexually assaulted, uh, again, my parents took me to counseling. Uh, they took me, I had a big, big sister, big brother, big sister program I was in, all the things, right? Um, none of that was very helpful for me. Uh, but through journaling, which I had always done, I love to write, I love to find a creative way to express myself. I found that at that point when I couldn't talk and I couldn't really share what I was experiencing, I used poetry as a way, as my outlet. Um, there is a transformative <laughs> um, energy that happens, I like to say, when poets or dance or music or whatever create 
creative avenue you use, there's something that happens when you are able to put to paper or put to music what that feeling, that pain that you have experienced. What's even more beautiful is when you share that and there's someone in the room that says, wow, that's my story, or someone in the room that can relate to that. So I've been writing since I was you know, 11 or 12, uh, really using it as an outlet, whether that was journaling, let me get my feelings out because I don't know how to say it, or whether it was writing a poem to put in metaphors how I felt. Um, what I have found through using this avenue is that it allows you when you can't put into words uh, a way to paint a picture, a way to share a story of what this feels like. And it is something powerful that happens where you share your vulnerabilities in this way. And then you, you share, and then if you're ever, you know, in a place where you're ready to share it openly, then you will find even this empowerment that happens. I'll never forget when I shared my first poem. Um, I don't know if you remember, but maybe Yancey's open mic many, many moons ago. <laughs> um, and so I remember going and I was low self-esteem, not feeling good about myself, all the things. My girlfriends had, had convinced me, Monica, go share your poem. And so I did. And I remember being this, just not feeling good about myself, but here after I shared my poem, it was as if a load was released. Like for the first time I had laid in front of complete strangers and shared my story that then all of these people, all the applause, all the cheers, all of this like gave me this energy that was like, wow, they actually like what I said. But then what happened was all of these different people, different ages, different races came to me and said, that's my story. Like I, that. I know what that's like. I'm a 19 year old girl that wrote a poem about my own experience, but here these people who are saying, don't you stop writing? Don't you stop telling that story? Because I couldn't, I wasn't brave enough to share, but you shared it and that helped me. So there's, there's, I like to say that when we share like this and when we use poetry, when we use outlet, and it could be dance, it could be music, it could be rap, whatever it is, whatever creative avenue. Yeah. Not only are you working to heal yourself and heal the wounds that are, that, that have kept you uh, in a space of pain and hurt and trauma, but you never know who you're helping and whose life you could save by using your voice. Um, and so that's that's what who, who we are here at Stand Up, Spike, Stand Up Speak Out, which is why we call it Stand Up and Speak Out, is we're using this avenue, healing through art, because I am a firm believer that my poetry has been my psychiatrist, my psychologist, therapist, in it all for me. Um, it has helped me through a lot of tough situations, helped me put right. in words what I couldn't process. So I'm a firm believer in any form of art that through art, we can begin to process um, what we've experienced, what has been challenging, but then ultimately begin to walk through a space of our own healing journey. Right, right, that's, that's magnificent, man. I own... Um... Something that you and I were talking about, actually, like this weekend, we were talking about in our conversation um, about how we keep quiet with sexual misconduct. Mm -hmm. And um, you actually had just touched on several reasons why we keep quiet. Um, so you can speak to some of that again, but also for not, not just the victim, but somebody who loves the victim, what are signs? What, because we're, 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 we're so used in our community, we're so used to being quiet and, and what happens in this household stays in this household and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But what could be telltale signs outside of the rebelling that there may be an issue, whether it's, whether it's sexually, whether it's verbal abuse, whether it's physical abuse, because, you know, uh, Suso handles all of that. Mm -hmm. and so what are signs for, you know, the, 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 the aunt of the victim, the, the cousin of the victim, the, the, the best friend of the victim that like, you know, something's not right with her today or, or for the past few months? Mm -hmm. um, what, what are those signs, please? So let's kind of, let's start with the younger child. 
I mean, if you've paid attention to your family member, you know, like that child might be outgoing, like playing outside, things like that. But suddenly this child, um, you know, doesn't want to be around anyone, doesn't want to go out by themselves. Um, they're acting strange around a particular person. Um, perhaps uh, children mimic also what has happened to them. So for younger children, what I've seen is that you may have a child who um, is very touchy-feely. So kids love hugging on each other, right? But there's a difference when you are, you are a child that's like really touching in inappropriate places, right? Um, trying to tickle a person, but like, you know, constantly touching their, you know, private areas and things. Um, and so paying attention to certain things like that, uh, change of behaviors around, um, you know, possibly the perpetrator. This could go either way because um, this is sexual abuse happens to both males and females. Um, older um, kids just change in behavior, um, change in um, being isolated, grades dropping, things that they used to be interested in, like you know, sports or dance or, you know, reading, anything like that, things that change um, could, you know, those behaviors begin to change for them. Um, and so just paying attention to those particular things when it comes to their behaviors. Um, there are a wide range of different things. So like, you know, if your child is isolated, you know, where they were really outgoing, but now they're isolated, that could also be, you know, some telltale signs as well. Right, right. All right, now this one I'm on. Huh, I'm gonna give you some time for this one because I I, I want to hear this. What is rape culture? What is rape? That was a lot of pause in between that one. So. Well, I'm listening to my kids. I told you I had a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to my what, is rape, what is rape culture? So I guess what we need to think about when it comes to this is that, you know, when it comes to rape culture, period, we have been in a space where um, <laughs> certain behaviors have been normal, right? So think about, you know, God take a girl out for a drink and, you know, I'm buying you drinks. So it's like uh, automatic, like, okay, we know what this is, right? Um it's also where, you know, you work on a job, you're working in a space and, you know, you think it's okay for you to come and put your hand on me or, you know, give me a hug when I haven't asked, <laughs> you know, you haven't asked for permission or asked for consent. Those are the things, but we have been for so long, women, we've, we've been in a culture where these things were acceptable. These particular examples were acceptable. Um, not asking for consent, thinking that the fact that, hey, I went out with you and we had a great time, right? But now, you know, I've things got a little hot and bothered. I don't want to keep moving in this space. Um, people think that, you know, well, there's been a time where this was acceptable. These things were acceptable. Women didn't always speak up for themselves or didn't know how to say no. I see that a lot with my young girls. Don't necessarily know how to say no or, or, or afraid to say it because afraid that you may end up being assaulted. So but what is happening, what I see and when I think about rape culture, what's happening is, or what I see now is that we have to speak about these issues um, rape culture simply is if I, if, if I didn't give consent, then it's not okay. This is my body. I have a right to, to, right. to say what I want, to choose what I want, when I want to withdraw consent at any time, um, whether I originally gave consent or now I'm withdrawing. Um, and so I think it's a conversation that um, I'm seeing more and more, and I'm so excited that we are having these conversations, but we have so much more work to do um, in, our, in, in our community when it comes to um, these conversations about abuse, these conversations about what seems to be normal, these conversations about what rape culture is. Mm -hmm. Does entertainment, rap, <laughs> any sporting, any of these things, do they fuel rape culture? Oh, absolutely. 
you heard the music, you hear the music, <laughs> you know? Um, I've done a workshop with my young people about music, like music we listen to. We, we're all like, hey, we love the beat, right? But we're not listening to what's being said. Music, as we talk about art being healing, music has the power to build us. It has the power to influence us. So absolutely. When every video that you see is what? A woman that's... What about the, um, what about the, what about the sporting events where the sisters on the sideline have dressed? I mean, does that feel I'll, go there with, I'll go there with you, but I'm also thinking about the lyrics that we had that we we also hear. I oh, I'm in 100% agreement. <laughs> There's no disclaimer. I'm in 100% agreement. Yes. For sure. When a lot of for, for, also trying to you know get on um, clarity on the visual representations of it that we also you know endure. Absolutely. So like when it comes to, when I think about music and our, our entertainment, everything is sexualized. Like everything is sexualized. I, right. I remember um, shopping for my daughter, right? She's, you know, um, 22 now, 21. But I remember shopping for her and I'm going in the store and I'm like, why are the shorts, all the shorts are like booty shorts now, right? Everything is Right. Hat, right. Top, whatever. What, what are we doing here? I'm trying to shop for my little girl here. Um, right. so I think about things like that. And I think about entertainment and videos and all of those things. I'm looking at this and I'm like, everything that I see, I can't turn on a video without seeing someone that is half naked. I can't turn on a video without seeing some guy, you know, throwing money at a girl and her booty and all that. I can't see this. So when, when, we, when we talk about this and we're looking at this, Think about, I bring it back to our children. Think about what our kids are looking at and how, how they're influenced by these celebrities, by the entertainment. And they're like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. When I see a girl, I'm supposed to slap her on her butt. I'm supposed to throw money at her. She's supposed to give me what I want, you know? And so it's so many different mixed messages when it comes to- That is the key. That right. Is the key messages because at that same time and within our community we tell each other you you know you can't judge you know exactly if, if she <laughs> wants to get up there and, and twerk and pop it we actually not not only do we say that you can't judge but some of them actually promote it and encourage it yes because you should be able to wear what you want to wear right without feeling like someone is going to come after you or that to anybody about their clothing. Let me tell you that as a black man, all right? Let me tell you that as a black man, okay, you better not say anything to any woman right. about your clothing. Then we don't have no space for that. Even if, I'm talking about even if it's your daughter, you can barely say <laughs> anything you to your daughter about your short and too short. You know, so... It, it, you 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 use the term that I, it, it's, it's so many mixed messages, and yes. the lines are so blurred and thin as mm -hmm. to what the integrity of our culture can endure and cannot endure. And mm -hmm. I myself, personally, my personal opinion. This is not represent the staff and management of Choice FM nine two point one. All right, but <laughs> my personal, you know, opinion is we all male and female have to pay attention to male and female clothing not yeah. just female clothing and not just male clothing but in mm -hmm. this process of healing and rebuilding our nation yeah we have to recognize that there is a rape culture out here we have to recognize that not all of us are mentally capable or strong enough to fight against the the it's just, some of us are sick mm -hmm. some of us have issues so I just believe we have, we, it should be some, and I don't know what that exact line is, okay? And I'm not yeah. going to claim that line, yeah. all right? But I can, I can factually say our lines are blurred. I yeah. can factually see that there is mixed messaging within our community as to what's acceptable, what's adult, and what's not adult. My sister and I were just discussing last night, we don't know if TikTok for children anymore or what. Okay, <laughs> right. We, we don't know. And yeah. our children 
are so far advanced. And granted, you and I at our ages grew up in a probably a more like you say that church mm-hmm. restricted, all right, situation. But now mm-hmm. it's more of a, a generation of I'm going to let my children explore. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have the reins on my children, mm-hmm. and sometimes that's detrimental yeah. to the the growing up of our child if we just let them choose when we know factually. Hey, wait a minute now. All right, <laughs> all right. Mm-hmm. That that's a little, that's a little too much. All mm-hmm. right, and that's not even that's, that's drugs. That's not even just sexual. That's right. drugs. Individuals we choose to be around. You know, I'm not gonna let you be around a guy who I know is robbing banks because he has good personality, and I'm not mm-hmm. gonna feel like you know my child. You know, should make their own decisions of who their friends mm-hmm. are because we're good parents and liberating and letting them make. And I know this guy's robbing banks. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So I believe that. There are a lot of mixed signals within our community as it pertains yeah. to that. Is Absolutely. there a remedy for it? Hey, we got to keep having these conversations. We got to keep, like you say, I like what you talk about when you say rebuilding our community because we have gotten so far away from, I'm not saying our parents' parents had it right. Right. You know, I'm just saying that we have to take our what we've learned and what, what is the foundation of what we know and then take this new generation of where we're at and figure out where do, how do we, how do we continue to have the conversation without making people feel like you can't do this or you can't do that, but like setting a foundation for them. Um, and I, and I feel like if, if there is a remedy, the remedy starts within our community in having these real conversations um, about people in the back where does it start at (laughs) in our community right and i'm talking i'm talking in the black community that's what i'm talking for anybody that even questioned it has to start in our backyards having conversations because we have gotten to a place where our children sometimes in some households not all but our the entertainment is babysitting our kids the entertainment is, is um, you know, they're, they're caught up in there. They're on their phones all the time. You know, that whatever they want to know, whatever they want to learn, all they need to do is go right to Google, go right on their internet, and they see it. We come from, if we wanted to know anything, we had to get an encyclopedia. We had to go to the library, or we had to ask somebody, okay? That's right different space so like we have to we can't just allow our children to learn from the world wide web we have to have real conversations with our kids about from rape culture to you know our history right right. come from um uh what we what what nutrition health and wellness all those different things so like we have to take it back to our own backyards and begin there by having these real conversations, put the phones away and not, you know, just put that aside and talk to our families because that's where it begins. So when you talk about, is there a remedy? You got to have a real conversation. Okay, cool. We see the videos. I see they twerking. I see all of that. What you think about that? What's your thoughts on that? Like build with your kids, build with your family. What's your thoughts on that? Is this, do you think that this is, acceptable do you what do you think when you see this because when you begin to have those conversations you begin to help them to create what their thought process but then it opens up an opportunity for you to build on the knowledge and um understanding that you have as well so i don't have the remedy i tell you that straight up i keep having conversations you know what i mean because i'm also a woman who believes i'm a full figure woman i believe that yes my body size may look different than someone else, but I should still be able to wear what I would like to wear, right? Without feeling like, oh, if I'm showing too much, that's going to cause someone to look at me or cause someone to think that I'm asking for something. So, I mean, we got a lot of conversations to continue to have. And right now I can say that we have a remedy, but I can say that these type of uh, conversations begin to create an opportunity for us to, to, to open up an avenue for us to begin finding a remedy. And that's, and that's, and that's what it's about. And let, let me get back to, because this sort of is in line with you. I'm sorry, say it again, sir? No, you're good. Okay. Um, with stand up, speak out 
you know, I've seen you guys have poetry contests. I've seen y'all do self-defense for the clusters. Like, give me all the many, many branches <laughs> <laughs> and avenues that Suso reaches out to, to the community. Um, so yeah, we, we do quite a bit. Um, however, I guess I want to bring it to like what we're doing now. So as a whole, as I mentioned earlier, we work with children primarily, but we also have programs for families. So to make it as simple as possible, we have a program called Girls Speak Out. That is our youth program that is for um, young girls ages 10 to 17. Within that program, we offer a mentor program for them. And then we also offer a summer camp. So you might've seen some stuff about our summer camp. So we offer that during the summer. Um, our mentor program is year round, is in a group setting and it happens pretty much from September to December and then from January to April. Um, and then we go into summer camp. Uh, in addition to that, we also offer therapeutic coaching. That is a one-to-one -one service, direct care, um, where we are, when we have these young girls in a group setting, oftentimes they are, um, they sometimes need more individualized support. And so when we see that, that group is not just that one layer of support, we need additional support for them. We then connect them with therapeutic coaching. So that's our youth programming. We also, as I mentioned, we don't want to just work with, you know, the children and not work with adults as well or with the parents. Um, and so we offer a program called the Brief Life Sister Circle. And that is a support group essentially for women from all walks of life. Some who come to us are survivors of sexual abuse or domestic violence, but they don't have to. That doesn't have to be the criteria. We're looking to provide support for women from all walks of life. And so whether you've experienced trauma, you are going through depression, you just need a support. You need to be in a space uh, around other women where you can talk about different issues from your health to finding skills and self-care, restorative practices that can help you be the best version of yourself. Um, so those are some of the programs that we, we offer. We always do community outreach. So when you're talking about self-defense, those are community outreach programs that we do. When we're talking about um, our poetry stuff, that's our fundraising, right? So we are always, you're gonna always see our fundraising events connected to the arts. So that's poetry, competitions, po spoken word, um, art auctions, things like that. You're going to see things of that nature um, when we do any type of fundraising events, just always connecting it back to the arts. Um, but those are um, a few of our programs. In addition to that, we offer professional development. So every year we have a professional development uh, workshop that we offer. So those are some of the things. I'm going to have to put you on mute because I hear my baby. <laughs> I told you I have my babies, but I'm going to put you on mute just a second. Okay. Well, that sounds like a lot that um that that sister is into. Um, when we return with her, I would like to get the information uh for you to contact her. She is a five hundred one c three, so she most definitely accepts donations, and that stand up, speak out, and see. So most definitely, we're going to get her to get the information uh, so she can reach out to you. Let me add. I mean, so you can reach out to her. You back, sister? Yes, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, look, I'm with me first. <laughs> it's all right. Let me ask you this question, because I see this a lot, and I'm in agreement with it, but I want to know, because you have created this space for me to ask you these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Protect the Black woman. Mm. What is the Black man's role in protecting the Black woman? What does that look like? How is that? How is he supposed to? And I don't necessarily mean his woman. Mm -hmm. it, could be his niece, it could be his sister, his own mother. We're talking about just a black man and a black woman in general. Mm -hmm. well, I know certain dynamics will be different. Of course, you will treat your wife. You know, it's going to be different than your sister. But I'm pretty sure that there are some universal 
uh, capabilities and skills that the black man harbors that can be beneficial to every black woman. Mm-hmm. Could you speak on that for me for a second, sir? Well, I'm going to bring it back to like the work that we do when it comes to like, you know, our community. Of course, Stand Up Speak Out primarily serves African American women and girls. So I'm going to bring well, it back to, to the foundation, right? Um, when it comes to what is the role of the, the Black man, I, I'm not going to speak on what the role is. I'm going to say what, what I like to see when it comes to a Black man protecting, pr- supporting our Black women. Um, that's, where I, that's where I'm at with that. So see something, you say something. We come from a family where, like we said earlier, when, you know, you know, this go in my house, what go on in my house, stay in my house, you ain't got nothing to do with it. Like, this is, this is my space. When you as a Black man are out and you see, you, you are seeing something that's not okay. We can't just decide to walk away. That's Black man, Black woman, period, right? You can't just decide, you know what, you see something that's not right here. You see something not looking right. We are quick to be like, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. They might pop off at me or whatever. How do you protect um, us as, as, as Black women? We need you to stand up for us. We need you to, to speak up for us. We need, in our when it comes to the work that I do, I need to see more Black men on the forefront. I don't have a program right now for Black men or Black boys because I have yet to have enough Black males come and say, hey, I want to... I want to be a part. Can I mentor, you know, some young black men? We, we've had young boys that come to our program that we offer therapeutic support for, but I don't have enough male support or male volunteers to, you know, get that going. So when it comes to what do we need, we need you to, to be on the forefront with us, fighting these issues with us. If we're fighting domestic violence, we need you up there fighting with us. We need you to, we need to know that black men are, are also, you know, having these real conversations about rape culture, having real conversations about sexual abuse, having real conversations about domestic violence. I don't care if you were a male that maybe you did hit a woman in the past that I need you to come to the forefront to begin to have conversations so and work on your own healing so that you can begin to come out here and, and, and shift what we're seeing as, as a serious issue when it comes to violence, when it comes to abuse and all of that. Um, so, so when I, I bring it back to the work that I do because I have some men in my space that when some things have not been okay or like when I've had young who've been abused and we've had to go to court I've had some men some black men that have come and said sister I'm I'm gonna you know be there to protect y'all going to the court I'm gonna be there so that you know the perpetrator if they decide to do something they see that you have this you know line of support of black men right here with you I love to see more of that because we do have to go into the court sometimes. We do have to go in some dangerous situations sometimes. We need folks to to be with us, standing with us in this issue, not just women. This isn't a women's issue. This is a human and public issue that we're dealing with. So when it comes to that, I need you to stand with us. I need you to protect us. I need you to honor us. I need you to understand who we are as black women and what, what we bring to our households as black women. Mm-hmm. And what we bring to our household as black women. You know, you know where I'm going. going. <laughs> yeah, gonna, I, that's going to be quoted today on my page. You can believe that. And I'm going to start it off just like that. And what we bring to our household as black women. <laughs> See, this I gonna, mean, with the foundation, you know, if you understand the black woman, you understand black. who we are. We are the black. foundation. You know, hey, and so when you understand that, you then you re- there's a different level of respect that you have for the black woman. That's right, and and and, you, and, and, and it's warranted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been warranted. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been a long journey you've been doing this. Um, stand up, speak out. You know, and and actually, just your whole name in general. 
Monica Day and Suso has been, you know, just ringing in this community for healing for a very long time. Um, what what does success look like for you, sis? What does the end of the day look like for you? What does success look like? Um, you for for a stand up, speak out. Like we're not talking about like shutting down and, and retiring. All right, that ain't we ain't talking about that. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so go ahead, because we don't we don't stop. This is what we do. This Until is what we, we, this is my life work. And when we become ancestors, that's when the real work starts. All right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so it's not about the stopping, but I mean, when you know that this is the force that my people can come to for what I originated it for. This is the force that I created. And and this is what's rolling through here and ripping through everything that's not supposed to be. What does that success look like for you with Stand Up Speak Out? Um, gosh, I mean, I, 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 I see it as being, um, <laughs> I see when, we, when we're not needed, <laughs> you know, and sometimes when I think about that, it's like, it's so far, you know, sometimes I think it's gosh, it's so far fetched because this fight is real. Right. When stand up, speak out is no longer needed, you know, where an organization like this isn't needed, you know, then I feel like the reason that I started this work is to bring healing and awareness and to, and prevention. I don't want to see domestic violence. <laughs> I don't want to see children being abused. I know what the aftermath of that is. So when it looks like, you know, when, when it's successful, then we won. We have, we have, you know, decreased this. We have ended it. The reality is, you know, I know the world we live in, but when I look at success outside of that, I look at, I have children that have come through my program that see the benefit and they have shifted um, their thought process, they feel confident in who they are, they are going out here, they become advocates. Um, I see, you know, more men being involved uh, as a part of, um, you know, just the work that's even needed amongst young males. So I feel like, you know, on one end, we are, we are walking in that success, right? Um, in a sense, from where we come from. We've been around for 16 years. A lot of those years of very grassroots, but we still have so much work. So on one end, I'm like, hey, you know, when we're not needed, that's when I can say I'm successful, right? <laughs> that's when I say the success has come. Uh, the reality is before that, you know, because we know how big this fight is, well, the success is for every young girl, for every, you know, victim or, or survivor, that says you're because of your program because of the art you know how authentic the staff and the volunteers have been i i feel better about myself i feel more equipped to handle what i have experienced um and now this is what i'm doing you know i'm in college now miss day and now you know i'm out here and i'm advocating on college campus right they're continuing the branches of the work Ms. Day, I'm using my art now, and I'm using my art as a way to speak out about domestic violence, you know, or I started this program here. And so the work continues because our role is to speak about these issues. If we keep speaking about them in spaces, we're either going to make some people feel uncomfortable or, or you make the people that's not doing, that, that's perpetrating feel uncomfortable. And then you right. people that need the help come forward and begin to get the help. So the first role is for us to continue to speak about these issues in all spaces, in churches, in communities, in schools, in all spaces, in spaces they don't want you to come, that's where you speak. This is how we begin to create, bringing the education, bringing the awareness, and then ultimately, hopefully, creating prevention. We are creating a space where we can hopefully prevent that child who watched you know, their mom and dad fight all of their life we hopefully, by being in our program, we can prevent them from becoming a person who's abusive or being abused. And that's why we start from the ground with our young people is bringing, um, you know, this type of work um, to young people so that we hopefully are breaking that cycle. So I know that's a long answer to the success, but 
I think I think a little differently when it comes to the sets. We shouldn't even have to exist. That's 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 my real answer. We shouldn't an organization like this shouldn't have to exist. But because we have to exist, you know, the, the, the goal is to bring healing to every woman, every child, every male that has been abused and let them know that this doesn't have to be the end of their story that the, the aftermath and the pain and the trauma and the, the risk factors, that doesn't have to be how the story ends. Um, there is hope and there is healing available to every person. Right, right, Sister I said That was a beautiful answer, all right? That was fine with me. So um, what's needed? What do you need from your community? And please give us all of your contact information. What do you need from your community? Male, female, anything. What do we need to do to support Suso? Because you have, when you say NC, I know for a fact you have the Durham chapter, and mm -hmm. you have a Raleigh Wake County, the Wake mm -hmm. County chapter. So yeah. What what do you what is needed? Speak to that. Um, so what do I need? I need we need supporters. We need volunteers. We need people to, to know that we exist, um, follow our pages. Um, but more importantly, we need committed volunteers and donors. Um, one of the things that you know I have shared in different spaces, we've been around for 16 years. We became a 501c3 in 2015. So those 10 years, I was on the ground, on the ground, running, speaking, sharing, doing poetry, speaking in any place that I could go to share my story. So I did the foundation. So a lot of people know Monica Day, but they probably know Stand Up Speak Out too, because it pretty much went right. hand in hand. So if you heard right. speak, you heard me do poetry, you heard Stand Up Speak Out. And so I was doing the foundation work during those 10 years of laying the groundwork, just laying, laying the work and laying the foundation. Um, in 2015, we became an official 501c3. And what a lot of people and a lot of nonprofit leaders get really confused is they think the moment you become a 501c3, oh, you good. You got all the money. You, you got, you got you money. Man, you got right. <laughs> right. They got all the money waiting for you. That is a lie. For anyone that is an executive director or founder and you just started your 501c or you just got your nonprofit, you just got right. the poor. Please hear me when I tell you that is just the beginning. You just got paperwork. The real work starts after you get that paperwork. You have got to be on the ground. So I have had to work my butt off. And one of the things that's been really real for me, and I'm just going to keep it all the way real, I really wanted to see more of my people and more of my community being donors to stand up, speak out. That is what, when you ask me what I still need, that's what I want. This is a black led, black woman led organization. And I am right here from Durham, North Carolina. This is my home. I always say I'm the little girl from Durham. This is my home. I have, I have been doing community work for years and, and putting it out there. I have remained consistent. I have had to go back and study and learn and figure out how to run this organization successfully. And I've been doing the work. I've done the work on myself as well as done the work in the community. What I want to see and what I would have liked to see, what I would like to see is that more of my people are supporting. We support everything that we want to support. When we talk about we want to support a Black organization, this is a Black-led organization if that's where you're at. So what does that look like? As little as $25 a month can make a world of difference at Stand Up Speak Out. We are still a small organization, but mighty. We are in different counties. We do serve multiple counties, but we are still a, what's considered a small nonprofit organization. So we still need uh, individuals to donate to us. We need, you know, a monthly contribution. If all you can give is $10, Give that ten dollars, you know, to this organization because what I can guarantee you is that we make a a little bit of dollars, a little bit of dollars. We stretch it. How you know how to do that, Monica? Because I'm a black woman who had to use us, who had to make every dollar stretch. Okay, <laughs> so, so that is where we're at. So when you sow into Stand Up Speak Out, I can say you are sowing into good ground. People, 2015 is where I started and I started with $0 and zero cent. I started with a 
a cookie dough sale <laughs> for some mm -hmm. and I started with a cookie dough sale, opened up my bank account with that money from the cookie dough sale, and it won't be about $150, right? Because everybody don't want to buy no cookies, right? That's right. where I started. So when when I when I'm talking to you, I'm saying we started from the ground, y'all. We started right. from the ground with nothing. Nobody's saying, oh, we're giving you this money. None of that. I had to put in work. I had to get in spaces. I had to go to, you know, meetings and be in spaces where I could just pass a business card, tell people who I am to get to this yeah. space that we're at now. Now we're yeah. at a place where we are serving multiple spaces. We are able to, you know, at least bring on another staff member outside of myself and hopefully begin to continue to bring in more staff members to help us. But we need volunteers, committed folks. You got skills in graphics. You got skills in building uh, websites. You got skills in helping us um, with, you know, keeping our volunteers on board. You write newsletters. We need all of that right you need folks again as i said you got five to ten 25 or you want to give to us on a monthly basis that's what we need i need 50 folks at this point right now to so into stand up speak out on a monthly basis from now until the end of the year if all it is is 25 dollars, that's what we need right so wow. tell, us, tell us how tell us how to contact give us give us that information Yep. So on our website, you can make a donation right to our website. It's www.susonc.org. You can go right once when you get to the page, you will see there's a donate button, I think, on every page. So scroll through, read through, learn more about us. And then once you've read about us and see the work that we're doing, click on the donate button. You can make a one-time gift or you can make a recurring gift. Um, all donations make a major difference. We are now, though it's COVID and all of that, we are offering virtual. We have not missed a beat, y'all. We have not missed a beat. Since March 16th, we have not missed a beat. We have consistently offered our virtual group mentoring sessions. We have offered our therapeutic coaching and our, our, our referrals have increased with that. Um, and then we even offered a virtual summer camp. So we haven't missed a beat. The, ch the folks that come to us that need our services, we made sure even in spite of a pandemic that we were going to be visible for them, that they were not going to be in homes where they felt alone. They're not going to just sit in homes where there may be a perpetrator there that's abusing them or may try to abuse them, that they knew that they still had a connection and a, 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 a lifeline with Stand Up Speak Out. And so we have consistently offered our services um, since March 16th. That's man. Outstanding, sister. I um I want to just thank you for giving me the time, but I also want to thank you for the knowledge as well as the work, the true work, because you doing work, you know, you doing work in the community. When you thank work, you. I believe personally that our community and any community is judged by the way we teach, we treat our elderly and our youth. Mm -hmm. And um my mother was a youth advocate. And mm -hmm. That had a youth church. Mm -hmm. Don't want children in her church. And um, she built the church, ended up building a church in Warren County for children um, mm -hmm. before her demise. And so it's like people who work with children are special individuals. Mm -hmm. Those are the original teachers. Mm -hmm. Those are the original. And, 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 in my, and in my world, it's always that black woman. You know, mm -hmm. and I don't know what anybody else's experience, you know, but. You know, outside of that schoolhouse, that education for life for me has always been that black woman's education that she has given to me, whether it be a sister in the neighborhood or, you know, family, whatever the case is. And mm -hmm. I really respect and honor your opinion and your, based on your profession, <laughs> not just in talking, but based on your profession and, and your actual being there and witnessing it. Like, you're your mm -hmm. database, you're, 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 you, your statistics in your head are, are accurate, you know, with everything. That right. You I just so respect you so much, sister, and I thank you for this time. Yes, um, thank you. I, I thank you for and anything. You know you're going to hear from me. I'm most definitely going <laughs> to. Yeah, you're going to hear from us both, most definitely. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on a, a Little Too Real with Bear Gervais. Y'all make sure you reach out and look up their Facebook. Tell me your Facebook, sis. So Facebook and yes, our social media. So on Twitter, 
and on Instagram, it's just at Suso NC. On Facebook, you can find us, Stand Up Speak Out NC. Um, so we're on all social media platforms. Um, and I just want to end it on saying that if you are an individual that listened to this show today and you are um, a survivor in need of a support group, or you are a child, or you have a child who is in need of our services, again, we have group mentoring for those that um, are in need. That is children who witness abuse or sexual abuse, or they're just dealing with, you know, lack of confidence, low self-esteem, or just need a space that is safe for them. Um, our spaces are safe and judgment-free and are available. So I would say, please follow us. We do have registration opening up for our group mentoring, and then we do take um, one-to-one uh, as well. So if your child is in need of therapeutic coaching, we offer that. And then any support group for women 18 and up, we do have our sister circles available. So you're not alone. We are here to support you. Um, please reach out if you need additional support from us. And thank you so much for having us. No problem, sister. So I'm going to end it on that. Thank you guys for joining us. See you next time on A Little Too Real with Bear Gervais. Are we ready? A Little Too Real with Bear Gervais. Saturdays on Choice. for me but you look so good to me i don't need another broken heart or